In this video, I'm going to talk about the results of the upcoming lunar eclipse that happens on October 28th, 2023. Um, the time for that eclipse is 16.14.03 Washington, D.C. So 4.14 p.m. about. So before I get into the actual facts of the eclipse, I wanted to talk about lunar eclipses in general. So as we go through life, every time there's a sun-moon conjunction, a new moon, we've experienced some cycle of activity, and now we're going to you know, complete that cycle and begin a new cycle. So we do that at new moon. Now at full moon, what happens is we experience the full import of the cycle activity that we started about two weeks before. So we're constantly going through this cycle of starting something new, having the full experience of that as at full moon, and then, um, you know, that starts to taper off. We start to consolidate that. That starts to wane during the waning moon cycle. And then we have another new moon. Now, what happens during a lunar eclipse is that during that full moon, the eclipse gets, the moon gets eclipsed. The moon disappears. So the difference between the new moon, on, or sorry, the full moon on a lunar eclipse and your standard full moon is simply put, the moon's not there. So you're expecting, you know, as we work towards things in our life, we're expecting things to be a certain way. You know, we're approaching things with a certain goal, and we're as consciously as we are able to, moving forward, planning, figuring things out, deciding what we're going to do. Now, while we're doing that, underneath all that, there's all these unconscious forces. And on the, um, those, it's these unconscious forces that create the biggest surprises and changes in our life. Okay? So, when there's an eclipse, the sun or moon gets blacked out for a moment, and that symbolizes that this is when the unconscious forces are showing the results of, you know, of what you've been doing. You know, you have your conscious side, but you have this whole unconscious side that you may not even be aware of that's making choices for you making decisions for your life, um, selecting your options in life. I um, mean, you're not really sure, you know, you think you're sure why you're doing that, but there's deeper reasons um, than you're aware of. And then during an eclipse, all of a sudden, those, the, the results of all that show up. So every 18 years and 10 days, there's an eclipse of the same cycle, which means a similar theme of stuff working in your subconsciousness, working on an unconscious level, that all of a sudden makes your life a certain way, okay? And these are not always um, negative things, you know? Uh, but the reality is a lot of what we're doing is not done on a conscious level, okay? So when the new moon, ha well, sorry, when the full moon happens and there's an eclipse, it means, okay, you're working towards this. This is what you've been working towards, you think. But when the eclipse comes, it's like, oh, wow, this is really the fulfillment of everything I've been working towards. Okay, and it's going to be very different than you expected. It can be a pleasant surprise, it can be a shocking surprise, it depends on the nature of the eclipse. But the full moon eclipse is about, you know, getting the full, you know, experience of the road you've been traveling down. And all of a sudden that full experience is not like, oh, what I expected, what I was working for, what I thought I was moving towards. It's a whole different thing, okay? So if you get tagged by a lunar eclipse, yeah, how you're expecting things to be is going to, you know, what you're working towards, it's all going to be very, very different all of a sudden. Okay? Now, with a solar eclipse, what happens is you're finishing a cycle of activity, which is the new moon, and usually you have an idea based on the previous cycle of what you're going to do in the next cycle. But during the solar eclipse, all of a sudden, things change and, you, and all this stuff happens and comes in that you didn't expect, so you have to adjust to how you're going to move forward from then. Okay? Um, but it's in some ways it's almost easier because there's more of a surrendering quality because you're already letting go of things and that's during a solar eclipse. You're already in a waning moon phase as it's approaching. Um, and so it's, it sometimes can be easier to adapt. With the lunar eclipse, you know, it's easier to change your direction almost. With the lunar eclipse, you know, depending on how invested you are in what you've been working towards, if that turns out to be completely differently, it can be a bigger surprise sometimes because you're actually, it, these eclipse happens as you're progressing towards something, okay? 
So expect the things you've been working towards um, that this eclipse is hitting, if you're getting hit, to uh, somehow be, you know, be different. The experience of what you're going to get is going to be different than what you thought it was going to be. Okay? Now, the first eclipse in this cycle um, started July 11th, 1843 at 1141.28 Washington, D.C. That's the foundation eclipse for this. Okay? Now, if you all calculate some of these first eclipse dates, you're going to notice that the sun and moon are going to be very far from Rahu and Ketu. It, they're just barely eclipsed at the first cycle. In the middle of the cycle, you get your strongest eclipses, which means the um, sun and moon are the closest to Rahu and Ketu. But at this time, they can be literally 18 degrees away sometimes. And so when you calculate the chart, at first glance, it might not look like an eclipse. The sun and moon could actually be in a completely different sign than Rahu and Ketu. Okay? So if you see that when you calculate any of these eclipse charts, that's why. All right. So in this eclipse chart, we have a lot of fun things going on. The primary thing is we have Saturn conjuncting the moon. Okay, so Saturn is a big part of the eclipse. It's only four degrees away from the moon, so it's right in the eclipse path, really strongly in the eclipse path. And the eclipse is also happening in the sign of Saturn. So the moon is in the sign of Saturn, the Lord is there. So it's a heavily Saturn eclipse. Okay? And to make it more fun, Pluto is aspecting Saturn, is squaring Saturn, you know, to the same degree. They're both at 22 degrees. So the theme of this eclipse is Pluto-Saturn. Okay, what that theme is, is that that's all about breaking down your fears. So the theme of this eclipse cycle is breaking down your fears by living, going through them. You know, these Pluto, we can constantly work on our fears, but the way Pluto helps us get through our fears is he makes us live through them. All right? So this eclipse is a live through your fears type eclipse. Okay? What that means is, as we go through life, we're trying to protect ourselves. And the subconsciousness has all these little games it plays that it thinks is going to help make us safe. Okay? Um, but the reality is, a lot of these things the subconsciousness does don't really help us become safe. Okay? They don't, they don't help. They actually cause the problem to happen more. Okay? They actually set us up for the problem. So those of you who are getting by, hit by this eclipse, yeah, you can expect that any fears you have revolving around that house and that um, planets that the eclipse is landing on are going to... Um, you know, you're going to have to live through your fears. There's a lot of ways to get through our fears. You know, the, the most, honestly, the easiest way, the fastest way is just to go through them and live through them. Um, this is like part of the, the mythologies of the world. Um, the mythological heroes have to deal with some really scary stuff. Um, they have to go into the underworld, deal with their fears, and then they come out strong enough to move forward. That's what Pluto-Saturn is really all about. It's about living through your fears. Okay? So this is going to be a scary eclipse for the people who get hit by it. Okay? Now, the good news is we have a lot of things to support, um, to support you through this, okay? which I'll talk about in a little bit. Oh, and those of you who are wondering before you start knowing whether you should panic or not, is that the um, eclipse is falling at five degrees tropical Taurus, okay? Um, you can calculate that with your sidereal ionumsha if you're using sidereal. So if you have something in the beginning of Taurus, then this eclipse is triggering you. That's the current eclipse on October 28th. Right now I'm talking about the original eclipse in the cycle so we can get an idea of what this eclipse goal is, okay? Um, the goal of this eclipse is to help you work through your fears by confronting them, living through them. And, you know, that sounds like a scary way, but it's really not, because it's a fear, it's not a reality. You know, we're full of fears, of things that, if we went through them, we would go, oh, that was easy. Living through a fear is never as, as scary as having a fear. And so when you live through a fear, you go, huh, I lived through it. 
It wasn't that bad. I survived. And all this time I was thinking that was the doom of my life if that ever happened. But then it came and I got through it and wow, I've cured that fear. That's what Pluto Saturn's all about. Okay? So, the fact that Saturn is also with the moon, really, and again, within four degrees, um, really intensifies the whole thing as a, as a, and it rules the moon. That this is all about um, confronting your fears and doing something that's going to be hard to do. And it's also going to be something that leaves you feeling a lack because it's happening in the sign of Saturn. Sign of Saturns are like, Eek, I don't have enough. So the fear you go through is going to have to do with your consciousness of lack, your consciousness that there's a not enough. See, if a person has fear of money, because they have this consciousness that there's just not enough money in the world. So when someone else makes money in their same business, they start stressing out, oh, I'm not going to make enough because so-and-so, my competitor, is making so much more. No. If someone has the consciousness that there's enough money for everyone, even if their competitor is making lots of money, they don't, it doesn't scare them, doesn't bother them. They know there's still enough money in the world for them to do their job well and make money and survive. Okay? So the fears that we'll be, you'll be dealing with will have a basis of um, a lack, a consciousness of lack, a lack of money, a lack of there's not enough people to take care of me, a lack of there's not enough love in the world, there's not enough loving people in the world. It depends what it's hitting. So look for the consciousness of lack there that makes you think that, oh my gosh, if I lose this, there's nothing because there's not enough. No, there's an abundance. We live in a world of abundance if our minds are geared towards abundance. Okay, There's an abundance of money, there's an abundance of great things to do in the world, great positions. There's an abundance of love. There's an abundance of loving people. Where are they? They're all around the people who have a consciousness of abundance. That's where they are. Okay. So this eclipse will also help people overcome this consciousness of lack by confronting it again. So if you get hit by this eclipse, yeah, expect to feel a sense of lack. Oh, there's not enough. There's nothing else. There's no other option. But you'll find as you go through this eclipse that there's actually not true. There's lots of options, there's lots of abundance, okay? So, if you can focus on your abundance consciousness, you can do affirmations, um, you can be a more charitable, a more giving person, a more loving person. See, people who have a conscious of lack, like with, uh, in regards to money, they're stingy, they don't want to give money because they think, oh, if I give this, there's not enough. But a person with a conscious abundance says, oh, I can give this because there's enough, it'll come. Okay? Same if a person has a, a consciousness of a lack of love. Oh, there's not enough love in the world, so I give it to this person who's not giving me two times as much love back. I'll run out of love, so I'm not going to give them the love. And through that, they end up having no love. You know, um, The way a, the law of abundance works is that when you give it, you always get more back. So if you give money, more money comes. If you give love, more love comes. But you have a conscience of lack, so you give less, there's no, you get less. And then you're living in a world of lack. So it depends not only on your consciousness, but your actions with that thing. Okay? So being charitable in love, affection, and care, and wealth, um, and opportunities, you know, is um, a way to improve all those things in our own lives. And you know, opportunities, another area we have a a conscious of lack. Oh, there's only one position. If I don't get this, I'll never get it. But a person who has a conscious abundance goes, you know, I think you should get the job. I'm not even going to apply because actually I, I can see how you're more suited for it. Okay? Because there's plenty of opportunity in the world if you have a consciousness of abundance. Um, and through being charitable and providing opportunities and allowing others to have opportunities, bigger and greater opportunities come from you. So, when you look at this eclipse and see what it's hitting in your chart, really examine yourself and say, how am I approaching this area of my life with any consciousness of lack, any consciousness of, um, you know, any consciousness of lack? Or how am I not giving enough in this part of my life? Because it's those type of things that are, again, are those fears. Um, and also, how, what am I scared about in respect to this? What scares me if I would lose this? What scares me about this area of life? 
and try to get to the root of that fear. Because it's these things that are causing you, your subconsciousness, to dictate some events in your life that are going to lead up to the effects of this lunar eclipse of, wait a minute, I'm not having the experience I expected because fears and a conscience of lack were in the way of achieving what you expected. Okay? Now, this all sounds really scary, um, but there's a lot of um, supportive things here. First of all, we have Jupiter in the second from the moon, Mars in the twelfth from the moon. So Jupiter and Mars are like helping the moon through this eclipse. Jupiter's like, the, there's wisdom in the world, there's teachers in the world that can help you get through this eclipse. Okay, they're, they're waiting there. So there's a, there's a wisdom, Jupiterian support structure available to the people who get hit by this eclipse to help them make it through this fearful, scary event of their lives. Okay? Mars is here. There's a, Mars is there to help them overcome the wrong ideas in their minds and to stand strong against the wrong ideas of other people and live out the right, you know, live out their right lives. What's a wrong idea? A conscience of lack is a wrong idea. A fear it stems from a wrong idea. So we have Mars here ready to, you know, cut the heads off those wrong ideas as you delve into them and introspect. So we have a lot of these two nice planets here. Okay. Then, um, we have a nice Mercury-Venus conjunction. You know, a mercury Venus conjunction when they're all alone is one of the best conjunctions. Usually this, they're with the Sun. But when you get them just with the Mercury-Venus, we got friendship, we have care, we have communication with others that can help um, with the situation. So it's always a great, great quality to have a Mercury-Venus conjunction. Okay? So there should be, um, people should find support group if they just reach out and find someone to talk to and connect with. Or you'll find support groups. But the biggest thing helping this eclipse are the Jupiter and Mars. Okay? So that's the main theme of this foundation eclipse. This eclipse is going to run every 18 years and 10 days. So you can go back um, 18 years, 10 days, um, sorry, from October 28th and see when this previous eclipse was. It was in October 17th of 2005. So you can look at that eclipse and say that this hit me to try to get a feel for this eclipse. Okay? Now, that's the foundation. That's the goal of this eclipse, is to help you work through your fears no matter how scary and how much a feeling of lack they give you by experiencing it, but having the wisdom and the strength and the, the friends and, and companions to help you get through it. Okay? Now, um, the current eclipse, um, the one that's going to hit you with the moon sitting at 5 degrees Taurus, October 28th, 2023, at 4.14, 10.03 p.m. in Washington, D.C. Okay. There's a lot going on with this eclipse. First of all, um, Saturn is not involved with the eclipse. It's not directly there. Okay. However, Saturn over here at zero degrees is you know, about four and a half degrees away from a perfect aspect to the moon. So it's got a nice, strong Saturn moon aspect. So we do get the Saturn quality in this eclipse of there's going to be, um, you know, you're going to have to deal with lacks. You're going to have to deal with your fears. We get that theme repeated, but not as drastically as was found in the original eclipse chart. Okay? So as far as this cycle is concerned, you're going to find if you're getting hit by this eclipse, it's something that you'll see you've been preparing for for at least a year, okay? Um, you know, because it's not, um, it's not going to come as such a surprise. There's a part of you that can already see this potential coming maybe for a long time. And you've probably been dwelling on these fears, these possibilities for a while, and so working on yourself. So the position of Saturn that's here basically means that you're more ready for this than you could otherwise be. Okay? Um, Pluto is not repeating that Saturn, you know, that hit to Saturn that was in the original eclipse cycle. Okay? So, 
Um, that's going to reduce the intensity of this from what it could be. Um, Pluto is making a trine to the moon. Is that a trine? Well, it's actually a square, out, an out of sign square. So it's a weak square. But there is some Pluto influence on the moon, which, yeah, do expect yourself to have to go through some, a big emotional transition. But it's not as fearful of a transition as the Saturn thing. See, one of the things about fears, it's like you can gear up for them. And this eclipse is one that the, the fears aren't going to be unleashed on you all of a sudden. It's been something you've been gearing up for, working on, and getting ready for. You know there's a change of some sort coming. You know there's going to be a lack, and you've been getting ready for it. So this particular eclipse, um, you have to work through those things I talked about as the main theme, but you're more ready for them. Um, you know, we don't have a, a really scary Pluto-Saturn thing, so it's not going to be as intense as it could be. Okay, we also have Jupiter with the Moon, and Jupiter with the Moon is going to help with, um, you know, Jupiter with the Moon is going to help um, give you the understanding, the wisdom, and the teachers to help make it through the shift. Um, Jupe, you know, anytime we get a planet with the moon in an eclipse, that planet is going to be retrograde and it's going to be really bright and really close to Earth. And so it's going to be close to you. Okay, it's close to Earth when it's retrograde, so it's a powerful planet and um, it's going to help you. You also got Uranus in the same sign, same sign with the moon um, and with and Jupiter. So what that means is, is that there's a part of you that is craving a change at the same time. So this Pluto is going to say, yeah, you have to go through emotional shift. And Uranus is like, yeah, and I kind of want to. There's a part of you that knows you need a change with this eclipse. And, you know, so when things start getting a little scary, if you know you need a change, it's like, well, I need, some, I need a change of some sort. So I can get through this and at least I have a change, you know. So Uranus there is going to help. And Uranus is a change for the better. Because what type of change is Uranus? It's the change of becoming more of who you really are. Expressing who you really are more truly. And that's the most precious change there is. So there's a part of you, if you're getting hit by this eclipse, knows you're, you're just kind of constricted and you can't really just be yourself. And by going through this transition, it's going to be a transition that you know is going to help you um, Live more as yourself. Be more free with your self-expression and who you are. And that's going to feel really, really good. Okay? Don, on the other end, we got a combust Mars and a combust Mercury, which means that we can't see them in the sky right now. They're behind the sun. Um, so close to the sun that we cannot see any sign of them. All right? So that means they're not really available right now. So while this eclipse previously has a Mars centered here to help, there's no Mars here right now to really help you. So in this particular eclipse, it's, it's going to be harder to fight against things. You won't be able to fight against things and change things that much. Okay? You'll be at a loss of how to um, change some parts of yourself that you need to change. You'll be, able, you'll be struggling with how to change the ideas in your mind. There'll be hard things to change, you know? Um, so we don't have Mars really helping out, unfortunately. Now, what that means is that it could be, um, it can take longer to get through it. You know, a good Mars finishes the battle in one day, right? A Mars that's not, that's kind of f too far away because he's behind the sun, literally behind it. He's so far away. He's as far from Earth as he's going to get that that's like the troops showing up late to win the battle. So it's just going to take long to work through and process and make the shift of this eclipse because of the fact that Mars is combust, okay? Mercury is also combust. All right, well, Mercury is the planet of, I want to try this, okay? So as things are happening, you're going to try to find solutions, and Mercury is combust. It's like you're not going to give the, give, be given the opportunity to try different solutions. So that means what's the right thing for you to do? It's going to take longer. So you're probably not going to know what the right thing for you to try is until about a month after the eclipse, after the effects of this eclipse is over. Okay? So Mercury and Mars have a similar quality to them in that they are both the planets that help us move forward among, in a difficult world. 
Mercury goes, well, this didn't work, so let me try this. That didn't work, so I'll try this. That's what Mercury is all about. Let me find another way to get done what I want to get done. Mars is the planet that says, I need to do this, and whatever it takes, I'll do it. I'll use all my will, all my strength to get the job done. He's not available either. So these two planets that help us deal with the difficult parts of life by trying or fighting are not really available to us. So that means you're not going to have anything you can really try. You're not going to have an option. And you're not going to have an opportunity to fight and make a difference. It's going to take longer to shift through this eclipse because of that. So while there's things on this eclipse that reduce the intensity of it, and you're already somewhat prepared for it, it's going to take time to get through the results of this eclipse because Mercury and Mars are not there to help you find solutions overnight. Okay? So you need to be patient with the effects of this eclipse. Okay? Um, Venus is not a huge player in this eclipse this time. Um, he's not strongly connected to any of the eclipse planets. He's in a wide aspect to Saturn. He's just not the most important planet. Um, so I'm not going to talk about him too much in the context of this eclipse. Okay? And yes, even though Rahu is in a different sign than the moon, there's still an eclipse because it's based on the degrees between them. And there's about 10 degrees between moon and Rahu. All right? So it's not the strongest eclipse. The strongest eclipse will happen when there's like 1 degrees, 2 degrees between moon and Rahu. But this is only the 11th eclipse in this cycle. And there's about 70 some eclipses in the cycle. So this cycle's still very, very new. Okay. Uh, let me think there's anything else I want to tell you about with respect to this eclipse. You know, I really think that covers it. So it's, it's going to be an important eclipse if it hits you. The closer it is, the more important it's going to be. Okay? Um, different people respond to eclipses very differently. Some people, the eclipse is 15 degrees away. It's such a sh gentle thing to them. It's just like flows. Other people I've seen when the eclipse is 15 degrees away, it's, it's still like, wow, I really felt that one, you know? Um, so a lot of it has to do with what your relationship to life is and what you're expecting. And if you're expecting life to, um, if you're paying attention to life and you're watching what's happening and you have realistic expectations based on what your actions are and what's happening in your life, and then an eclipse has to be very close to go, oh my gosh, what just happened? Okay? But if you're not really aware of what's happening around you, if you're not really aware of what your actions are causing or, or where you're going um, or why you're doing something, then an eclipse can be further away and still, oh my gosh, what a surprise. Okay? So you'll react differently to those things depending on you know, how you're operating um, in respect to the thing that's getting eclipsed, okay? Because there's certain things we're in the dark about, right? And there's certain things we're very aware about in our lives. And so that will determine um, how wide the eclipse needs to be to trigger you. If it's within eight degrees, um, even if it's in a different sign, you likely will feel something. Um, it's more powerful, though, when it's within five, six degrees of the same sign, okay? So since it's at five Taurus, if you've got anything between 0 and 10 Taurus, yeah, that's going to be a strong eclipse for you, and a very important one. But um, if it's in this, any sign it's in, everything in that sign is going to go through this to some degree. Okay? All right, enough on that. Thank you.